Come, Mr. Thomas Martin. No Thomas B. at the red of it. Seven Fair Heller Road, Cookstown. And here with Mrs. O'Neill also. Now, Tom, you may, you may sit down and relax. <laughs> we'll see if this goes in, and I'm sure it is. What's this hand going in? This. Well, Thomas, <laughs> you were born where? I was born in Brookend. Was Brookend the name of a town land? Name yes. Of town land. It's, only it's not the usual name for Irish town lands. It's only Irish town land, That's what I was about to say, yes. Name, you see, you spoke the other day about someone Planet. living in Brookend. Huh? Planet. Oh, this is one of the few that's where that's planted people. It came from, from uh, County Down or some place. I know. Uh, Farmers, Whites. I saw there was a father buried there the other day. Yes. Yes. Thomas J- James Farr, I think. Or Bob, Robert. Robert. Robert James Farr. And there is such a town land, I mean, that's news to me for the order of a Gaelic origin. Yes. But he says, the man that brought them there, he said not only was he changing their place of abode, but he was also changing the name of their town land. And I wonder from what it was changed. Well, no, an no, extraordinary thing, an interesting thing about it. Yes. Are you there comfortable were, there, ma'am? Oh, I'm comfortable. I'm always comfortable when I'm sitting. <laughs> um, there, were, there were whites, oars, farrows, and purposes. Yes. Brought to that town now. Aye. And Warner. Aye. The last of them died last week. Which? There'll not be another white. Another foul. Well, there may be fouls, I think. No, their fouls are still there, that's right. Uh huh. Their fouls are there, but the whites are all dead and gone. The purposes have moved out. The Warnocks are all dead. And the oars moved out. And the other family of whites went to Australia. That's true. So that's the end of the plantation. The wolf there in our boat. That's extraordinary thing. Well, I, I, you see, that's an interesting little facet because, as you see, I thought Brigand would be largely the name of a house or a You see, but it's the name of town land. Yeah, and it's bordering what town lands? Monaghan. Yes. Uh, 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 yes, and Tamna Valley. Yes. And. Uh, uh, well, it's there Tigran. anyway, huh? Tigran. 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 That was well, there's a Protestant Quinton. church there. The Protestant church is in Ahakalam, isn't it? Oh, then it would serve that planted area. Yes. And the rectory is in Ahakalam, yes. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, it's, that whole district was planted, I suppose. But Brookend was yeah. the only name, place uh, named here. your parents' name were? Arthur O'Neill. Aye. And my mother, she was Colm. Her first yeah. name, Mary, yeah. Mary, Mary, Mary Ann Kern. Yeah. I see. Well, um, and you, you, ma'am, then, your name was McKeown originally, was it? My name is McKeown. Uh-huh. And your was parents My father was James McKeown and my mother was Susan O'Neill. And you were born, born what town land were you born? I was born in Tamna Valley. I see. Well, you were telling me there were three generations of teachers in your... No, not in our family. No, 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 no. They're great friends of ours, and that's how I know so much about them. But those McKeowns are not really related to uh, the McKeowns I belong to. I see. Yeah. Well, your people, were, you were a teacher yourself. I was a teacher. Myself. Where did you teach? Uh, I taught in Cook. I taught in Cook for 45 years. And the school in Cook? And the school in Cook. Where's the school in Cook? You don't find it. It's on the Ballandary Road. The Ballandary Road. Oh, yes, there is. I know the Ballandary Road. I know Father Johnson now, indeed, well. Fine man. He's great. He's great. He's and he's, he, he's like Pierce. He's interested in the youth of the country. He's interested Very much. in the youth. Ah, yes. He's well, then, in your early days, there was a father, uh, he was a parish priest. First parish priest in Coke when I went there was, he was Father Donnelly, Father Peter Donnelly. Oh, yes. He was a delicate little man. Carrick Moore. Mm-hmm. And he had been there for a long number of years, and then he became parish priest of Art Bow, but only for a short time. Ah, where did he go then? He died. Oh, yes. see, well, and, um, uh, was he I'm insulted sorry. at him in the Congress? God rest his dear soul, it wouldn't have been hard to insult him. Oh, is he that right? very, very hasty in that Sorry, right, yes. right, right. So take no notice. He was succeeded then by Father Terry, was he? Father Terry came after him. He stood a long Father time, and now we have Paul McShan. <laughs> Well, then, uh, Thomas said, uh, and then your family and many others were there. My sister. Uh, another brother. I see. Two sisters two and sisters. A, two sisters and a brother. Well, I can know that if you let me, was there any, you spoke about the McConville's, was there any Fenian activity in the very, for you might have heard your parents speak about? Oh, well, or Red Arbo? I had, I had, uh, McConville's. Uh, uh, 
Well, he was on one. We're supposed to be. Horan. Venus. Now, there's a name that you don't associate. Horan. It's a weak loan. Horan. 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 I thought it was Horan. Horan. No, Horan. It was a. It's a non Catholic name. It is. And he. And I think about his grandfather was a convert. I see. William John Juan. Uh, and William John Juan went to America. He married a girl from Bandai many, many, a hundred years ago nearly. But uh, at any rate, i just tell you who he, he had five daughters. Yeah. And two of the daughters became teachers. And the eldest girl was Mamie Juan. And she married a man called Mackel, uh up about Derry Kerb. And she taught up there and fall down for years. And she is the mother of Father Lee Mackel. And Aloysius yes. Mackin. Yes, I know. He's a very fine man. Yes, I know. Uh, so that's where the one. The one, the one, so, one. so you think that there might have been some. Uh, uh, when I speak about Finian, I mean post 18 and 67, which is yes. a years ago. Yes, that's what I say. Because it's, he, he uh, became American citizen and he never gave it up. I say yes. I know. He wouldn't give it up when uh, he came home. I would just say it would be, more like, it'd be most likely that he would because Clan of Gale. Were an organisation in America that was running step by step with the early days of ARB here. But then, mm -hmm. whenever he came and he uh, joined the Age Party too. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, yes, my father. Uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with that because yeah. the Age Party yeah. were, were they carrying on the tradition of Parnell. Mm -hmm. Yes. My father was a, a supporter of the Age Party to his dying day. Yes. But he died at sixty. And no. he, he went. Him and, and uh, Felix Laverty went to. Um, Meeting in Dublin, the volunteers. Yes. The time the, the volunteers. That was 1913. It was the time, yes, I know. Or McNeil's. Aye. Uh, uh, I had the night for all of them. I know. That would be 1913. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Delegates. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Yes. Thanks, <laughs> that Jim's tired. And my father, my father, God rest him, used to tell a joke about that. They went for night to the theatre. Uh, and there was a girl at the spits, well, there's a variety act there. Yes. And this poor old fellow, Felix Taggart, was very straight laced and he said, Now, if she had told us she could do that, we would have taken her word for it. Well said, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Look, ma'am, don't be make me to eat, for I've just come from my sister's Mona, where I had high tea, she came off duty, and I had tea with her. Right, Thank you, please. Bread, bread oh, I'm sorry about your bread being burnt. <laughs> well, then, uh, I, I suppose, well, well uh, when were you born, please? You would remember this. Some 18, of the, 1891. I know. Well, in 1891, there was no such thing as Champagne, no, of course. I remember my father having a, a card, the Land League. Yes, yes, that, yes League, I know. Sort of thing, sort of I know. That was about the first thing. Uh, that was the first thing, yeah. And uh, I remember them having big drums, beating big drums. Oh, yes, they did. And there were no such thing as bands at that time. Oh, I know. And we neither sighted bands. Neither sighted bands. No. The too costly an affair, anyway. Remember that? Uh, in the volunteers. Aye. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. I remember going to a, a review on the Washington Bay someplace. Yes. And we had the biggest company was there. Ah, uh, well, who would have reviewed you, can you remember now? I think it was White. Captain White. Captain That's White. correct, yes. Was Herbert Moore Pym around? Or uh, Wilmer Hobson? Yes, I don't remember very much about it. Oh, Dennis McCullough ever around there. And uh, our head, or well, the man was telling us, here's McCallum, the name of McCallum. From our both side. No, he'd come from Cookstown. Hilly Byrne, outside Cookstown. Ah, he'd been ex-British army. He was an ex-British army. Mm -hmm. Most he'd of the instructors. He'd been in the war. And I know, nearly all the There's instructors that time were that. Yeah, they were well, well drilled. They were well drilled. But how many would have been at the worst? Would there have been several thousand? I'm sure there would have been... Uh, we had about a hundred. Uh, I know, yeah. yeah. Did you have any uniforms? No, no, Redmond no, would call no. them pre-split pre volunteers. No, there was no uniforms. And you just had wooden guns? Yes, wooden Well, there were some guns, uh, some rifles, old Italian rifles were distributed. Well, some of them had them, but we never had any. They were distributed at tomb by Joe Deflin. Yes. To national volunteers. You see, now, before the split... They were called National Volunteers mm -hmm. as opposed to Ulster Volunteers. Yes. Yes. Then came the split and the National Volunteers retained their identity of name. But they would call them Sinn Féin Volunteers. The forerunners of IRA called themselves Irish Volunteers. Yes. Mm. Well, uh, 
there were no uh, in the in, when the Irish volunteers now were formed, they certainly wouldn't have a hundred in the company. In the company, yeah, there were very few in the early days of Irish volunteers. Very few. Can you remember that? It was who was in the Irish volunteers? Not the national volunteers. I I was not look every lavish garden. Well, it turned up well. There were only a few, only a few. This was post 1916. Can I speak in language, brother? Gregory. Gregory. I died in 1919. I see. My flu. It was a big flu in 1918. I remember a lot of them. It was sort of a. with a formula, a sort of a nice brigade. Where am I going with that one? Uh, I. I think it was that Dwight was forming somewhere like for him. He wanted them to for home defence. Would that have been it? Aye, uh, well, uh, of course, <laughs> you see, it all depends on what time you're speaking about. Captain White, you see, was... Oh, 1913, you're speaking about. That was in, in Father McGuigan's day. No, it would be 1913. Aye, uh, well, you see, that's pre-16. Yes. Pre-16. Uh, it's, it's really post-16. Mm-hmm. After 16, you uh, It's more concerned because pre-16... Well, everybody was on the bandwagon there, and many of those who were on those volunteers went and died in France for the defence of small nations. But well, now, if you went from Argo and joined the British Army. I know. Mm-hmm. Well, now. Uh, because they were posted at that time. No, the, uh, it was only about 19 and 17 or 18. We'll say 17 when anything like organised <coughs> Irish volunteers was made. Yes, Can you remember who made up organised for on behalf of Sinn Fein, whether anybody came from Dublin? To organise volunteers after the rebellion. No, there was nobody well, then they were organising politically before the 1918 election. That was about the, that was the only thing. Sinn Féin was something. Sinn Féin was coming Oh, I know, yeah. Oh, well, you remember the 1918 election? Oh, yes. De Valera spoke at some meetings, I don't know, at that yes. time. At the time. He spoke at the old chapel just after mass. Well, after what sort of a reception did they get? Oh, very good. They, they all stood to hear him there. I know. They were all sympathy with him or not. When did you get your motor car for the first time? I was in 21. Oh, I see. We haven't got it yet. Okay. Ah, I don't know. Ah. Well, well now, can you remember who had been in that would be a time to fix it. At the nineteen eighteen election, who would have been considered as Sinn Féin volunteers? Whether they'd been doing duty at the polling booths and tally rooms on behalf of Mulroy. Well, I can see them yet. Marching with the Harley sticks. Yes. Well, they were marching with the Harley sticks. Yes. On the evening prior to, uh, Sunday evening prior to the election. And I don't remember very many of them, quite honestly. No. I wouldn't have known them all. I've only been about six, 15 or 16 years of age. Uh-huh. But I can see there must have been maybe 60. Mm. 50 or 60. John Cooney, he was a. Yes, that's right, John Cooney. He was well up on that day. Well, is John Cooney dead? John's dead. What time land did John live in? Kitty Copy. Kitty Copy. Up in that upper side. Well, there was a fine, there was a Sinn Fein band then. Well, it was Command, Thomas Ash. It was the Thomas Ash Command. And they had a large flag that originally was given to them by Francis Bigger. Yes. Mm-hmm. They, uh, it wasn't that really a sort of a Sinn Féin band. It was supposed to be. Oh, it was. Ah. It's because I remember seeing them parade through Marafel to go to a meeting in Mahara. Or a pig band. Yes. There was a meeting in Mahara, I should think it would be about the 29th of June, and uh, they, uh, I think Daryl Figgis was addressing that meeting on behalf of Sinn Féin and Mahara. And it was headed by, well, a fine contingent from our boat. Oh, probably joined by Derry Crin and these others. Yeah, well, now, that's 1918 election. 19 and 19, the war broke out in the south, so to speak. And uh, they got more physical force coming up here. And... Uh, 19 and 20, there was a general raid for arms or ordered in all volunteer areas throughout Ireland. Yes. Now, um, perhaps you didn't take part in any raid for arms, but some did. No, some did, yeah. And they were repulsed on occasions. Oh, some of them, They were repulsed at Farrells, for example. Where? Oh, yeah. uh, that, that man who has died just now. His father. 
At his valley. Oh, was that so? Ah, yeah, they went to his house, you see, and asked him to throw out the guns, but he wouldn't do it. No, no. Was that Karen then, no? No, no, no. that was... In Mora Island, then. No, 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 no. Trigdal. The island hill, not the island hill. Uh, it was Trigdal, and that's not far from Mona Ho. It's next part of the land of Mona Ho. Well, I mean, you'd have heard of that. You didn't take part in them, Tom. No. Uh, actually, you probably came into the transport. The Quinn and I know they were, yes. And on occasion, some of those would come up from Balaharday and Derry Crim to raid in lower oh, yes. clubs. Paddy Mullinan, Mickey Mullinan, Brownie. Ah. When, they, when did they go to jail? They went to jail in no, 1920. 1920. Ah. Because so I think they were, they were still in jail when their mother died. They, they went to Kennedy's up in the corner. Yes. And there were reports there. Also. There, there were three, three or four Kennedys, you see, and they had rifles. I know. Ah. I got up to the house and had a lot of bother getting away, getting away I think. I think they had. And there were a post here in Kelly Byrne. At Hessens. Oh, at Hessens, oh yes. At Hessens, aye. Ah. Well, the Hessens raided their house. Hessens. Well, they did. Yes, house. that's when they were in 1922. They got them to. You know, they thought Major Morris was hiding, hiding in, in the house. Uh huh. Well, he wasn't at that time definitely hiding in your house. He may have been on the run on occasions. He was on the run, but he wasn't there that late. Uh, what time in 22 was, was that? It was a man that Saturday. Easter, wasn't it? About Easter? Yeah, well, that's right. Mm -hmm. This uh, man, he was... Uh, he came from London, and he, he got on the car at uh, Duff's, and I brought him up home. I was going back into Cookstown, you see, after having a road out of Cookstown. And he sat in the car... Well, I went into the house and got my tea. Mm -hmm. So then we went back into Cookstown that day. And the neighbours, some of the neighbours, seen him. Yes. They reported it was Major Morris. He was well dressed, you see, this man. He was the name of Ryan. Ryan, eh? Uh, he had no connection or whatever with Congress. No. But they thought he was Major Morris, you see. So the word got around, down not so he? wouldn't go down that he was staying in our house. Yes. So they came and rested the night. Put in the door and yes. held us up and searched the house. And Grandma O'Neill was ill. But by good luck, uh, Auntie Kathleen, God rest, was at home on holiday. Yes. She so made me busy for the old lady. And the boy at the window outside, so watching, he was watching, he could see her, you know. Lie down, old lady. Lie down, old lady. Lie down, old woman. Oh, oh dear, dear, dear. Oh. How rough can you be? Well, mm -hmm. make my father keep up his hands to him. That's a tiring thing to do. That. <laughs> no, 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 it's only a... <laughs> no. Well, uh, they, were, they weren't masked in any way. No, no. It was well out of their own police well, area, so to speak. I where Morris was. Uh -huh. They were the driving Morris today. And I said, no. Yeah. Well, when did you drive him last? And I told them the, the day that I had him. Yeah. Because there was a, a policeman seen him in the car with me. Yes. Were stopped at Paddy Higgins. Yes, Kelly Byrne. Kelly Byrne. Yes. I said that the last time I had him, he was at Paddy Higgins's and the left him at Paddy Higgins's. Yes. I knew they knew, knew Paddy, that much. I wanted to know where was that. Ah. And I said, you know all right where Higgins's is. Ah. I let them know who they were. There. Well, if anything, I know and after that, there were nations that could be when they knew that I yes. told knew the truth. Where. Yeah. Ah. And they were among our best customers from where the wee shop had to say, yeah. They never held it against him. No. The Hessens. No. Well, what could they hold against him? He didn't, he wasn't on the radio you know, at all. No, but at the same time, there is a terrible spite for listening to people. Oh, I grant you, but they, I mean, Tom didn't take part in any raid in their home. No, I didn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, there was another day, and the same thing happened. I was driving them once. Yes, I know, yes. Yeah. I was taking them, their mother and their daughter, and another girl that didn't make up to see Mrs. Smack. Mrs. Smack. Yes. And going along the road, up above Juan's a bit, we looked at this man and he had a new suit and he was all dressed up. This fellow here's a name McEwen. Another different McEwen. So, and there's McEwen. There's a lot of McEwen. I know, I know. So we lifted him and took him up to uh, up above Carnan. I have the brothers. Yes, the brothers. He's going to visit the brothers. Yes. And while I was going in, or in the car, we passed these people going to Albany Church. Yes. 
you seen the man in the car. Uh-huh. That was Morris. Again? Again. Uh-huh. So, when we were coming home, I was held up ten times from above Carlin till I got to my own house. There's only a man of a few miles. Two or three miles. All different groups of specials. All different groups of specials. Be man. Thought Morris had been thrown back, you see. And they'd get him. And I wouldn't get him. At this time, Morris was probably in the free state. He was. <laughs> Where he was. But I know. Because I'm sure, yeah, I mean, what... Got to, they got to know that I was driving him. He used to come to the house, you see, and they got to know it. Well, you had actually driven him at some time. I had driven him a lot, you know. Ah. They didn't, they didn't know uh-huh. He drove him a lot, but Father, by the time he had done the driving... He was out of power. He was out of there. Power. It was only when they, he was finished driving that they began to find out that this man was... Had been that. Uh, yes, involved in any way. Uh, you told me that you got the motor car now in 1921. Yes, yeah. What uh, time of the year? In October. What was the number of it? For I'm sure you had a, you had a GI at that time. And people generally remember yeah. the names of their first number. 17 or 1998 or something. Is that right? It wasn't 1598. I have 1598. I don't know mine. Uh, it might have been a 1598 or something like that. Well, I know. Well, it was like, actually, uh, the year then, it was really for transport purposes your oh, car was, was car. Oh, yes, it had a car. Ah, I know. Well, now, uh, who else did you drive as well as Morris on occasions? Oh, there was... Did you ever drive... John Larkin. Larkin. Ah. So, and so. Did you ever drive Duffy or anything? Really? No, I don't think I had. Damn. Well, I might have had him in the car. Not knowing who he was, of From course. From Riverstown up to the camp or something like that. Yes, that's true, there. yes. Aye. And, uh, and you drove... Dan McKenna. Aye. And, uh, well, when you were driving them to Staffordstown, where did you pick them up? Well, the only one I got was... Damon, Newbridge. Oh, you were, you were empty till you got to Newbridge. Yeah, right? Aye. I went and collected some Ireland. Larkins. At Larkins, yes. And that's a brother over They were all... But did they go by boats? Did no. they go by boat to Stafford? They, they went by boat. They were over. And over then you had a rendezvous with them at Stafford's time. Right. That's all. And see, you the two of them through two in the car. Oh, just Paddy Damon yeah. and you. Okay. Yes, I see. Which was safe? Oh, quite. And I left them... Uh, at near Stafford's time station. And they will come through... Port Leno. This is on the return trip. The return trip and come back to Mrs. Damon and told her everything was all right. Yes, you so went back with them and the males to near Port Leno. Uh-huh. Well, then they, they allowed you to go then, of Leno course. You would be finished right. then. So you reported to Mrs. Damon that everything was okay. And you came home. Came that was that. Did they bring you on the subsequent? There was two Staffordstown rail holds up. And that was the only one I... I know that you were on. Well, then... Uh, Tom, Mar- or Tom Martin then told me how you met him, and he couldn't remember the name of the other young man that was with you at Georgetown Station. It was the name of John Doris. Yes. Ken Rush. Ah. Uh, he went to America since two years. But now Tom was coming back from Scotland, I think. Yes. And I think he had some stuff with him. He had stuff with him, but I didn't know what he had. No, he put, I didn't know at that time. Like, and he, he was afraid that he might be serious. There generally was a policeman on duty at the station. No, Boris, he was at the head of the V-man, and he was always at the station, he had a car too, uh-huh. and he would have been always there, so we arranged for that, let him come out the other room. But how could uh, Tom Martin, and, and uh, he has told me how he did it, but I want to know, could it be done, <laughs> could, he said that he uh, got on the platform, and he discovered that he mightn't get out past, so... Uh, I think it must have been then this young man, Doris, came in and he said right. that if Tommy, Tommy and Neil was waiting for me Tom, to go around to the goods yard mm-hmm. and that he entered the train again, which seems unlikely because the train doesn't stop too long in uh, Stewartstown Station. No, it just passed. It's not Stewartstown Station. He said no. it was Cookstown it's Station. Cookstown Station. But Tommy, Tommy maintains it was Stewartstown Station. You see... And he gave me the impression that it was Cookstown Station, and by what he said that, there would appear to be Cookstown, because he said he entered the train and, cro- and got out of the other door on the opposite side and walked down into the good yard. Well, could, you could do that. Could you, well, you couldn't do that so much as Stewart Street. Well, you could go down to the end of the lane, you see. Yes, but he, could, he wouldn't enter a train. Yeah, he could go down to the end of the lane, you see. Yes, 
He wouldn't have to have to do that. No. Oh, he could do it. Look, and you see, he could do it at Stewartstown. But you must remember that a train at Stewartstown is only a temporary halt. It's not a, I know, it's not a, I a know. stop. Oh, I know. Mean, I mean, I was there. He'd already stopped at the far side. And he could have went. See, and over the up the lane coming from Dungannon yeah. was on, we say yeah. the left hand side, heading Third north. Side. Yeah. But he could have went on then into the He went into the Jens, he said, yeah. for a while until he thought the coast was clear. Then he entered the train and went through one door and out through the other on the rail side and walked down to where in the way eventually you were there waiting for him at the goods yard. Yeah, for him. Yes, he would be out to the station. I don't remember now. Doris told me that, that he had stuff for the many of them, yes. that they wanted to. Yeah, and you're, you're, you're certain that, which is most likely, because it was, the near, it was the nearest railway station to... Oh, the nearest railway station. And uh, all said and done the safest, because there weren't nearly so many police about. No. no. It's a quiet place, Stewartstown Station, at least it was. I know. Whereas Cookstown Station is was practically in the town. Ah, and it was where well, I watched. Yeah. You had to come through Coke, and then you coming home. <laughs> well, and he told me on yet another occasion, you were told to drive like the devil, and regardless, and Mick Finn was on one side with a toast machine gun, and he was on with two grenades ready to... And, and that was through Coke? And you never stopped. Through Coke. Oh, I was, very seldom stopped in Coke. But the, 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 if you had... We were stopped on the road, like, we were stopped... He had a pretty old Chile boy there. praying here, a heart out for him, I'm sure, and certain God rest him. Uh, I don't know how they Well, these are all pre truce presumably. Well, I wouldn't say that. Now, the word, uh, well, yes, Tom Martin, it was pre truce when he was getting over Ireland. The truce came on the 11th of July, 19 and 21. Oh, uh, Tommy hadn't occurred that day. On the 11th right. of July, I say, you're right, that's true. Yeah. Uh, there's no reason to say anything, there's not. Well, then, then uh, Tom Martin gave me to understand it was pre, pre truce. He's wrong, he's, he's dipped there. He's so. Well, he might have been. He was in it before that, all right. He was in it, but he wasn't over in Scotland bringing back stuff. No, this, that he, must this, have been, this, is, this may have been the second time. Or so. <laughs> that must have been in uh, the winter of 21 or the beginning of 22. That time. Oh, was it just after and I got the car. Busy, yes, I was here busy as well. Yeah, October, anyway. I know. Couldn't be any sooner. Mm. I know the Stavestown was post truce, you see. Yes. That was certainly 22, I know. That was, and was it 22 that they had the pitch battle with the B men at Eddie Donnelly's? Yes, oh, it was on the month of May, 1922. Yes, That's the year I started teaching. What was it? And the month I started. And how did you get from your home to there? On the bicycle? I went on a bicycle fire. Uh, well, you went through it all, I suppose. I never made it. I never saw anything happening. No. I never saw anything happening. It was near there, near one of the Cars Hill, isn't it? Cars Hill, yes. That used to be a sort of an old hideout for them. and was. A building right. there. It's Nobody an extraordinary it. place for echoes. There are so many hills. There's Cars Hill, Monahoe Hill, and Donnelly's Hill. And this valley in between where the church was. Uh -huh. And I believe that the night of those raids, every shot that was fired sounded several times. Don't go up on our houses. <laughs> That's the business that started to fire. Yes. Uh, he, he echoes, echoes. echoes. The school, you see, that shot yes. around the Monahoe school. You mean the B-Man? The B-Man. Remember they had the sh their own shots? And why they were very buried at that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> ah. They thought they were being fired on. I know. And that's one of the reasons why they were so hard on Donnelly's house in a way. Oh, and they cleared off very quick after it. I see. They and came from Tamlock Moor, I suppose. Yes. Oh, and uh, the funny thing, that if it had been the night before, it would have been trouble because... Uh, all the men were in there. They were all there. Aye, this, now, this tell me that now. There this wasn't so many of them. It all cleared out and all cleared everything away that night. Is that right? It all was away, only this... And there were many were left. A few rifles and things. Were... And how many men were left there? The night before there would have been maybe a hundred. And that night there was only... There was Tommy Martin and me. There was two other young fellas. I'd never seen them after they got out of the house. But there was a fellow slept through it all. What'd they call him? McHugh. Another Michio? Oh, no, I won't be told. You know the, the Kennedys of St. Eddie Kennedy and John Yes, Kennedy. they were Michio. There was a stepson mm -hmm. that had his stepbrother or something. Mm -hmm. Some day there. And he... He slept through it all. He slept through it all. And if he had been there, he'd have been in it. And I because he had a good rifle. 
Listen, the kids love they didn't go on and raid the old barn. I didn't know he was there. Yes. Because I had only, I wasn't in this shorter time than you were here. Yes. If I come across the fields, you see, and got up. And I come by the Donnelly's, and I don't know what of them. But I wasn't right in, and they, the light had gone out, the kennel, the, the roll had gone out, and I had to go sent for kennels and tea and stuff to make these fellas some That's tea. That's right, aye. I didn't know, and I know where I got a rifle, the rifle I got, there was no bricks in her at all. I see. A lot of cat on the top of the hill. So there was just four of you in the hall? There was just four of us that, that I knew. This fellow was asleep and I didn't know he was there at all. I see. And then there was another fellow along with Arthur. Crozier. Crozier. Ah, Crozier. He got away too. So there was just six, probably, in the hall? The, the one in the hall. In the barn. In the barn. Is it the back of the broken house? Oh, I know, yes. But, uh, and the, uh, where had the others gone away? There was nothing fun to do. Everyone had... The action had been called off. The action was called off. They were alerted there because there was to be a general big battle in the whole of the six counties at the time. I think that was the reason. They were all... And all of the areas were alerted. And they were all... They were well, all had, taken away from... And they had... And the, what was left in the place? Well, there was just... This fellow that was asleep had a rifle, and Tom Martin had a rifle and a revolver. Yes. And there was two or three other old ones that were no good. No. So Arthur and these others were sent for candles and provisions. Yes. Mm. Teddy Donnelly's. And whenever Arthur... Arthur had a revolver with him, and whenever he was in Donnelly's, he was dipping down to lift the, uh, the, the candle. Provisions, eh? And come out with it. It was the kitchen, he was, and he came out the back. And Mrs. Donnelly says, to him, Yeah, the revolver, what did you do with that? Was, he's a good one, have to use it. But meet the bee man. So he came round the gable and he just met the bee man and this fella had come and put him up. Yes. So he lifted the revolver and fired over the fella's head. He said he could have shot him, but he didn't like for he knew. I know, I know, I. And he fired over his head and dropped a can of tea in a loaf and away his best. And before he got round the gable, the sh- shots were. And Crozier, does he get away from Crozier, he went the other road. Yes. He went the road and got left. See, so that's the advantage of knowing the district. Of course. Well, then you people in the hall would have heard that shot. We heard the shooting, that's it, got us out on the hill then. Yes. And yes, the, the, the shooting started, started for a good wee while, like they, they fired away at two or three rounds. And then here we heard the revolver shot again, away in the distance. Yes. And was out there running across the, the Retorted Field. Yes. And he tripped and went down, and he thought he seen the bee man coming after him, he says. Uh, <laughs> he was thinking of it in his head, and he fired again, he said, yes. the revolver. And, well, you and, and we heard that shot, and Tom Martin says, he's away, he's got, he's got away, he says. Yes. He had a second shot like it was. Mm-hmm. was he got it as a warning shot. That was where, and of course, you see, Arthur was on his own ground, he knew every field. So he well, uh, but then uh, you four... You left the sleeping man in the hall. Right. Didn't the know he was there. The and went up to a hill behind this barn, this yes. barn, yes. Mm. Well, did, uh, were the bee men firing from the valley up in the direction yeah, of the yeah. hall? Well, when we were going up the, the, the... After we came out of the, the barn, the, there was two of the shots fired, and I said, we'd better take a couple along the ditch, like there was no show. Yes. Instead of going across the hill. Yes, I know. So we went up the ditch and then... Was it dark, Tommy? Oh, it was dark, no. Uh-huh. Well, then, did you fire anything down towards no, them? No, In the general direction? Tom, he was going to fire two of the shots down, and decided no use in firing because... Yeah. Well, he'd be give away your position. Yes. Right. Right. Well, there weren't sufficiently well armed. To begin with, no. To fight it it. Well, there wasn't enough people. No. There was only there was only three in the no. outcome. In fact, there was only two. The other the other two, two, two young men went away. Two young fellows went away. You can't remember who they were. Oh, I see. You're only young lads, aren't I know I were, man. They were post by post troops. It could have been Pat Joe Teven or Jimmy. Jimmy. I see. Mm-hmm. Later on, their home was raided, wasn't it? Arthur oh, Neil right. told me that he and Teven, they were cousins, I think. No, they were cousins, I mean. And then, <clears throat> I know. Well, now, 
the, that was on about May, the, that would have been May the 4th or so, 1922. Yes, but soon after journey. that, there was a general exodus. That's right, that's right. But you were telling me about the Killyman people that were on the, and on the run, right? No, no, Killyman no. volunteers. He had sort of a, a battle outside Hello there, or something. They had a clear off to them. Oh, I see, yes. They were, they were marked fight. people. They were marked. So they were in, on the run and some old place down to Loch Shoe, were they? were. They were down in the Of course, of course. Yes. Old house. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, an old place, you mean. So, an only old house. You mean. So they decided that they would have to go to the free state. Too. This yeah, is where yeah. the wedding comes in. I want to hear about this bride and groom. <laughs> yes? That, is, oh, that yes. must have been that was the sunbeam car I had that time. The old sunbeam. Oh, you had started with a T model Ford. Aye, a T model Ford. But this is a big sunbeam that I had that time. Well, that was soon after time. getting the T model. He didn't keep it very long, that team, Arnold. He must have kept it a very, very short time. He kept it a short time because the camels were colliding with her. Yes. And then yeah, but only had her about a month or two. No, I had her more. I had her a year, I think. Before I got well, if you had her a year, you weren't driving a sunbeam with taking men away in 1922. No, that's... Uh, they, I don't know. I, are you not talking about the... Uh, Mary Lizzie Dan and Damon were Mary Lizzie. Mary Martin. Would that not have been in the Ford? No. It was in the Are you sure, Tommy? I'm sure it was in the Ford. Well, that's a year afterwards, ma'am, now, when I think of it. You see, he got his car in 1921. And now this is about early June 22. There's a sunbeam. What horsepower was it? It was 16. That's just a pretty big car, I wish. It's a big car. Well. And we decorated her with. Ribbons. We must get the braid party complete before we start off. Who was the braid? The braid was Lizzie Davenport. Mary Lizzie Davenport. From what town now? From Sasha. Right. And the braid's maid was? Mary Martin. Mary Martin. Sister of Tom. Sister of Tom. And who was the pseudo bridegroom? There some of the Tomneys, I don't know. See, and the best man. And he was another brother. A Tomney. A Tomney. Right. So how many did the, oh, the bridal party? Would be a dozen? No, they couldn't be getting them no, on no, here. No, no, there was only, there was three, three men left off over all of these two girls. And then we got another man in Armagh. Oh, you went by Armagh? We went by Armagh. And there was another car in Armagh. Some of the rest of them. Yeah, well, they'd have to go to get them. You couldn't have brought them to there. No, I didn't. Big and awesome cow was. The night before, you see, oh, no, that's fine. Eh? Mm -hmm. They were the night before, so all hands headed then for the Middletown border, presumably. Middletown border. Crossed over to Clunas. Yes. Delivered the bridal party. Yeah, got them there, that's right. we got to bring the bride back again. got to bring the bride back. And the best, <laughs> 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 And so coming back then, you there were speed men. Uh, there were specials on oh, duty. One specials. of them was a native of Brookend. He was. Uh, he was uh, bigger. A man called Bigger. Uh, you know by getting past him no, uh, when he I saw Brookend. Yeah, I showed him a license on his own. Mm. Now that's how the Killy Man volunteers got home, got got safely out of the jurisdiction. The. Uh, but he, on other occasions, of course, you must have had to drive over to the recently formed Free State with others, would you? Well, I went to... Once to Did you ever drive over by Straban direction? No, I was over there with uh, Morrison. Yes. And Morrison. And and Don McKenna. <coughs> over by Lifford, I suppose. By Lifford, yeah. yeah. We went to Dumbo Castle. Ah, well, that getting arms that time. I know, they were, yes, that's right. Getting for get the rifles over there. I think you told me the other day, too, that on one occasion you did have some rifles in the car when you were coming back oh, from there. Not from there, no, from Belmdary to Coil. That's the only place we brought them over. Oh, of course, they were bringing back some that, that belonged uh, to the Belm, to the Coil and Company. Yes, uh, they got the land off. Uh, could you, did you ever hear anything about how arms were brought over from County Donegal to any part of County Tyrone? Yeah, what they were brought back again. They were brought back again? Yes. But, uh, well, they mightn't have got very far, I think. That time they split. Just oh, I grant you, yes. But uh, they were, they were, they, it's not so much where the, the actual arms is, 
What was the, you see, you couldn't openly bring them through over Lifford Bridge at Strabane, as you no, well know. We there must have been special guarding that we bridge, We didn't bring too. any anyway, though, really. Oh, well, you didn't hear of any. I thought they, made, they must have brought them then by across a boat across the river. They must have brought them some other way. But Talking about boat, I suppose you heard many a time about those uh, same volunteers on the run-up around that area used to go out on the lock and boats if there was a raid contemplated. Aye, that's right. Our specials went around there. Our specials didn't raid our boat much. They were afraid of it. No, they didn't. They were just the one big... Big man. Well, the time they thought the um, Killy Man boys. Yes. And they got out in the boat. And yes, that's the thing kind I of have in mind, aye. Got out in the boat. Stay well, out, then stay out uh, to their left. Aye. Well, then there was, there was a couple of men wounded at the Valley Rona and ambush or shooting, and they were brought across the lock. I wonder where they had been brought from. Somebody said they were brought from the Fatchy Quins. Is there a place? Is it Kentur? No. There were uh, people called Quinn Fatchy. Fatchy was a nickname. Yes. Oh, they were in the district. Yes. It was Kentur. Yes. Uh, and that uh, some of these were brought across over across the, by the boat. But, uh, That's quite possible. But, uh, uh-huh. There was another fellow. I left up to Glenow. He ruined it. Yes. There's skirmishes on between Coke and Germany. That was Hugh Breen. No, it wasn't Hugh Breen. It was Nemi Camel. Yes. Nemi Camel, he was a married man. Uh huh. And he got ruined at. I left him up in Glenow one night to come. And they wicked me up. The I know. And I left him up at uh, Falls. Yes. And they got a doctor. Yeah. Got him a witch. Got him over the border then the next day or two. I see. Campbell. I wonder where he's from. He's from. Carlton. Can I call him? What ambush was that? Was there an ambush? There was the uh, ambush. Two policemen. Uh, and they are doctors. I don't know. Ah. They were coming on bicycles and they read the horn. They didn't get them. Well, the police rode on, aye. The police rode on. Aye, aye. They fired aye. back on them. Aye. They get hit. Like, oh, I wouldn't want so much. Like, uh, where was it? Horrible. Aye. Did you the... Uh, I think they, they, they never named it because they were ashamed of this. Oh, naturally they would be very ashamed. Well, uh, <coughs> Tom Morris then, he, he went to Clonus when he crossed the border. I think he was in Clonus, most likely. He was away. I never, I didn't leave him across. No. Uh, usually he went to, uh, there was someone in, uh, in Armagh. There's another driver. There was another driver. Either. Was he a trainer? No, what's it called, that driver? I think they have a hair's business at the moment. That's it. Uh, there weren't any other hiring car, cars by team. Were there any friendly cars here in Cookstown? Well, there was a, a bit of Easter down there. Yes. He drove from him, that fellow Hagen drove for him. Where's Hagen from? He was from, he was from Coast Street. I see. Union Street. Union Street. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Union Street, that's right. Yeah, his brother was shot in Belfast. Aye. Uh-huh. This fellow used to drive, he had drove Easter's car. I know. For him. Can you remember, although you might not have been taking part in it again, you're on transport. Can you remember any rating for Pochine by the volunteers? Oh, I do remember that too. Can you tell me any story about that? Oh, I remember that. I wasn't on it. No, that's the same, yes. Well, what did you hear? They had the... They went and read this... Pudgeon still and... They caught two of them. Yeah. Um, one of them got away or something. Yeah. Two or three of them got away, I suppose. This yeah. fellow was caught. He wouldn't... Well, they said the names, they wouldn't do that. Yes. They threatened to shoot him, somebody said. Tied up and all, I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> yeah. But he never would give in, or didn't. Didn't tell him. No, that's right. Well, they didn't shoot him, I'm sure. No, they didn't shoot him. Nah. It's more afraid. I'm going to be a Frank O'Connor missed that one. Well, then there was also, there was also God, Thomas was arbitration courts. There was arbitration Where were they held? They we were held in that old school. Yes. Aye, formerly a school. Yes. What were the names of the justices? I don't remember very much. Well, I think you were. I don't know. It was just there. 
But well, somebody thought that you might have been clerk of the court. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> I remember bringing some of them to the court. Oh, I see. They were a very fair court. There's nothing to be ashamed of oh, because yeah. they were very fair courts. Well, yeah. And they... That was a... The one day was that... That was a girl who was suing the, the Protestant man from Tablet Moor. One of the McKeown's at Tablet Moor. Another McKeown. Another this McKeown. time a Protestant. Well, Protestant. Suing him for what? For some wages or something. I see. Well... And she was short. Very short. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I hadn't worked it out. Well, they wrote that they had come to an agreement and they settled it. So McKeown decided to pay. He paid it. But he probably wouldn't be at the court himself, was he? I think he was. I suppose he would. Uh, he he could get told to come back. Well, that type of people they would have won. Oh, the McKeowns were like that. Uh, uh, well, then, uh, there was also, I think, uh, I think that uh, I remember hearing somebody saying there was a court being held in that hall. And the RIC on patrol called in. They thought, uh, I think they thought they must have thought there was a play going on no, from the stage. I remember was there was some talk about that. I didn't, I wasn't there that night. No. But the police could, could do nothing. It was just. I see. They said it was all right, like it was a. What do you call it? A court. A court. A very. An arbitration court. An arbitration court. I know. Well, um. Uh, Yes, they, there were sports held at the, uh, at the Old Cross of Moortown and the volunteers did police work at it. Yes. And I think they spilled any illicit spirits and they, I think they just spilled any legalised spirits. They would have no spirits at the sports. I remember that uh, too. I was at the old sports. Uh, yes. yes. But, uh, I remember them saying that some of the boys that was at it would have been glad of some of it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have spelled it like it got a chance. Oh, I see, yes. <laughs> and then <laughs> I was making fun of them. I see, it, it, must, it must have been true that they did. They weren't going to allow that sort no, of thing to happen. Uh, that would probably be a Sunday evening. Oh, it was a Sunday, surely. Sunday sports. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. The band was there that day. That was about the first time I seen the band with the band with the band with that flag. I think it was, uh, it was you were saying that there was a man early. called McKeever might know where that oh, flag McKeever's went. McKeever was there in the band, you see. And ah. And the keepers, there was three or four of them in the band. Yes. They had the pipes. Ah. Uh. That'd be Barney and Paddy. Paddy. But it's John, he was the drummer, the big drum. Ah. Uh-huh. Of course, Willie really John's dead. He's dead. God bless him. It was Paddy and Barney, they were. Yes, they lived down uh, in Derry Croon, is it? Is it oh, Derry Croon there, John? Yeah. But then there was also. Uh, there was they lost, a... pardon me, Father, they lost their holding their farm. When they put the aerodrome. Aerodrome down there. Oh, I see. That's how they happened to be known by the day. Well, there was, um, let me see now, what else they? There was an old building, I think, it might have been Clonto Quinn. It was used as a sort of a manufactory for, for repairing guns or something. Yeah, that was a down in Clonto Quinn. Ah. And also, so I think... Behind... Sandra Quinn's old house. Oh, I see. There, up at the back. I know. Oh, they, I know they wouldn't be. They weren't in that. No, they weren't in that room. But this, no, this was a derelict building. Mm. At least it was an empty building. Oh, and it was well away. Off the road, so. Beaten track. I know, why. Uh, well, um, there was also then on Carris Hill this house we spoke about. Yeah, that was Jimmy occasion, That was occasionally used for holding prisoners if they had any. <laughs> prisoners. Because on occasions. Uh, prisoners were sent from one volunteer area to yes. the other to do hard labour. Mm. They didn't have prisons, to, no, said, they but they sent them on and <coughs> would make them do work. I met Quinn had them. Was he in charge of prisoners? Yeah, prisoner. uh, I think there was a there was a gamekeeper or something. Somebody said arrested. Oh, well, that was in Cullen. Ah, uh, and that he was kept there. He was, he was, no, he wasn't kept there. He was, he was way up in Lachamore or way. Oh, I say, yeah. He, I, what they call him? I don't remember what they ah. called him. But I uh, remember Arthur and, and Stuart Coleman. Yes. They were policemen. They were sent to arrest him. Stuart Coleman? Stuart's not a very, uh, not a seemingly a Christian name for a, <laughs> for a volunteer. So he was there and we captured this man and I took him in the car then away across to... Had, you any, had they any difficulty? No, they had him handcuffed or... He's I know, I know. Had a handkerchief across his eyes and everything. But they left him in the day, broad daylight in the street. About ten o'clock, 
They, they, they went as policemen and they put, put the had, finger on them. So they to had speak. him when they arrived. I see. And then I got him into the car. Because it was up Anachar, you see, it was all Catholics there. There no... That's Anachar, as you go out of here to go to Arbo. Yes. yes. The old Anachar Hill, like it was. And what estate was he a gamekeeper for? It must have been up at the, at, uh, the mill. You know, the, the Stevens? Yeah, Stevens. I see. Uh, because it was young fellas had taken timber out of the plant. I know, where. Uh, the firewood. Uh, and they, they, they were prosecuting. They were not more than the court or something. So they oh, were I see. Give to prevent this giving evidence. And they only kept him a couple of days and let him out again. I know. Left him away. So the case would be adjourned, I suppose, uh, so or maybe postponed. Well, you made a mention there of Stuart Coleman. Ah, Stuart seems a strange Stuart name. Stuart Coleman's father and his uncle, when they were young men, married two non-Catholics. I see. But they became converts, the two girls. Yes. They were the name of Taylor. Yes. From Arthur. Yeah. And they brought up their Catholic families. Uh, rough, you know, not no, really uh, good Catholics <laughs> now. Very rough and careless. Uh-huh. But not one belonged to him, lost the faith. See, and he was known as Sturdy Cone. Oh, was Stuart Cone. Cone. And there are still Stuart Cone. Yes. I see. Yes, there are several Stuarts. Ah. I kept that name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he must have another name, ma'am, as well as Stuart Cone. I expect he ah. I don't He spoke about a Joe Stuart. Did you say they are Joe Stuart, no? No. Ah. No, no, no. I don't know. See, he never known by anything when he's Stuart Cone, ma'am. Sure, but he probably had in the register, you know, in the baptismal know, register. But there's a name now we didn't remember, Thomas, now when we were doing personnel of volunteers. Stuart Coleman. Stuart Coleman. <laughs> Stuart Not Coleman. one of them is remembered the until this moment. The Colemans, uh, yeah. that, that particular family, is one of the oldest families in our boat, whatever their faults may be. I grant you, yes. Yes, the Colemans. What town land would they live in to get to, to, to their Lurley, credit be told? Lurley Road, Lurley Road, Killy Canada. There's a district of Ardbo along the Loch Shore. Yes. And it's called Kilke. How do you spell it? Kilke. It's pronounced Kilke. K I L T H H, is it? Kilke. But the, where do they, how do they, it's, it's a nice way you're saying it, but I don't think I can say it that way. Kilke. 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 Well, Kilke is made up of um, Killy Canavan. I'm trying to take them as they come. Killy Killy Canavan, Lurgy Row, and Kilmiskelly. Now, Kilmiskelly is the one that's nearest to the Old Cross. I see. But it's not. That's the Old Cross is not in Kilmiskelly. No. Uh, Killy Canavan, Upper and Lower. Now, there were Coleman's living in Killy Canavan, Upper and Lower, and there were Coleman's living in Lurgy Row, but I don't think we're really in Killy Can in Kilmiskelly. I see. You'll not remember all that, but you're very good. You're an extraordinary memory, man. Uh, no, I know, well, I mean, I have it here, but at the same time, no, I'm pleased if it was only if they were considered kind of rough people. Isn't it good, like, that somebody should remember them as having done something noble, in a sense? Do you know, Stuart Coleman? But it's, uh, I think that life's not worth living if we can't remember the good about people. I know, but then I don't want to ever mention that name, and we were going, but for that Jesus episode, God. we hadn't even included them in the honourable list of Sinn Féin volunteers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, that's true. Well, uh, the Coleman's yes. still there. Oh, yeah. yes. He's still there. And he's still there. 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 He's Well, then, did they molest you very much, apart from the Hessens going and raiding you now, soon after all this ended? Well, now, look, Tony, excuse me for butting in here. There is an episode, I don't remember exactly when it happened, that you went down to uh, Draperstown for Mrs. Malloy, God rest them all, they're dead and gone now. Uh, Roger's and, uh, sister, would it be? Yes, yeah, Father Roger's sister, Mrs. Malloy. Remember, <coughs> you were held up on the way and beaten. No, that was... That was 23, was it, was it? Mick Quinn and Paddy Mullen and me. And, uh, Bridget Donnelly. Okay. Bridget Donnelly, you see, just a little bit of a little bit of a girl. I'd give her a lift and 
Ach, Berger. Uh huh. She was a teacher there. Oh, I see. Miss Miss. It was just after the. It's Barry Mulder School. She taught him. Miss Burns. No, no, it was before Miss Burns' time. Yeah. Can't remember her name now. Bella Rule. She was a policeman. Yes, we had him. It was after that. And we came to the. Bella Mulder corner. And these demons were all there and they let her out. So we went on to the Ripperstown and coming back then, they attacked us. Took us out of the car and searched the car. And they stood us up like in the ditch. Where did they attack you? Desert Martin? No, it wasn't even my dairy. 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 I know, I know. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what I mean? I'm sure. No, I went to school in Valley Mill Dairy. Well. Mm-hmm. So uh, they, they stood us up like in the wall or a hedge. Uh-huh. And, uh, this wee boy go up to Paddy Mullen and he says, Keep him up. Ah. He wouldn't make me keep him up only for that old rifle. Ah. And the boy says, These boys are giving back chat. Ah. And they just rushed at us then and scattered ah. us with the rifles and hammered us back yeah. into the car, down to the end of the car and get away. I went to the rifle. Some of the night ah. before. Uh, whenever you'd be going to there, of course, you would go through the loop, wouldn't you? I would go through the loop on that road. Ah. Well, I don't know, Mr. McCown, who that teacher would have been. Oh, I'd love to remember her name. I knew her, you know. She was older than I was. Manini. She was Miss Meganini. Meganini. That was her name. Miss Meganini. Did she teach in Valley Mulder? She taught no, she didn't. in, uh, no. 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 What did she teach? Loop. Oh, she Must have been in Loop. That was her Loop, that's right. She was in Loop before Mrs. Park came, got it. Aye, it must have been. I knew that's there was no assistant Miss Meganini, that's what it was. Uh, she got a lift as far as Loop Cross Road. Right, she was down in, in Donnelly's, you see, and then we... She was visiting Mickey John Donnelly's sister. I know. You know Mickey John Donnelly? He, he would have been in the volunteers. Oh, well, he was on the boat. Oh, Ah, yes, see. Mm. But he was well, uh, caught going through coal for a revolver. I see, yes. And got him on the boat. I know. But the, uh... It's strange now that, uh, That it was at Ballymull Day Crossroads that you were beaten up. Aye, ah, yeah, and the very next Tuesday night... Uh, uh, McEwen McEwen's shot. Uh-huh. That was near that crossroad. I took Sean McEwen on the next morning. I called at McEwen's and took him away. Which of Henry? No, it was Sean. No, their brothers were, the one that was shot dead was James. The other two wounded were Thomas and Francis. And, then where the and Henry, or Harry, was he, the other. Harry, yeah. He was on the run. Yes. I took him away because he was... He was in danger, yeah, indeed. In danger. And where did you take him to? I took him to the camp. Just at Mahara. Mm-hmm. So he must have sunk his head from it. Can you remember, was it, can you remember, was it then or just or after the funeral? It wasn't the morning following the shooting because he oh, wasn't no, there. Yes, he was away. It was him they were looking, you see. I know it was, yes. Well, was it the... It away. must have been after the funeral you took him. Because he, after, what he, after the funeral of his brother James. No, they were shot on the Tuesday night after. I took them away on Monday. Oh. And they were shot on the Tuesday night. I see. And that Sunday night or evening, you see, we were raided or and they got the hammer and I was telling them about it on Monday. Oh, I see, right. And the McCombs knew them a lot of them. Aye. And there was Dr. Brown's brother who was in charge of them, they said. Oh, uh, well, uh, there was well, a brown brought brown up, but it wasn't the brown from Coke that was arrested for it. It was a brown from near Marafelt. Mm-hmm. You see? Right. Ah. Mm-hmm. And stood his trial. Brown. He was kept nine months, and, and then stood his trial, and the case was dismissed. But he was brown by name, but from near Marafelt. Not, Marfelt, mm-hmm. not the same as the doctor. Hey, we well, must be sure about this. They lived up from the opposite end. They did. A big house, a big farmhouse. Uh huh. And this is, uh, we need to be very certain about this because. Oh, yes, it will well, be. Because. You're only, uh, you're only suspecting him. You I know, but you, you brought him, say, about a couple of days before actually his brothers were shot. Yes. You're certain I'm of that? I'm certain of that. Because it was on Monday morning I went for him after that Sunday and I showed them the, the, my bike where it was black. I haven't been beaten near his home. Near, yeah, mm-hmm. and I told all these boys that it was not. It was by had a travel turn in his eye. Yes. Ah. And they knew him too. And it's, I heard afterwards that he got killed on a tractor. Uh-huh. 
Well, there was anything ever come up, could we do? It's funny that because the brain he stood his trial had a turn in his eye. And the case was dismissed, of course, being a crime case that wouldn't do too heavy against him. But now, I always was the opinion that Henry McKeown was in Dundalk before his brothers were shot. Mm, he made a went back. He might have gone from Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Can you remember, as it was, to the Kulmasilla, up to Dr. Donnelly's house, where the camp was at, Ma at Maharaj that you brought him? Or something like there. In the mountains? In the mountains. But can, uh, you can't remember which... Glenelg. There were two Glenelg. camps. Glenelg. Well, then he must have moved from Glenelg to there, because he was eventually arrested at the camp, near the camp, in Maharaj, along with Paddy Hurl. Yes. You see. After that? After that. Sometime in June. He was to come. What time of the year was this that was? They were they were killed on the ninth of May, nineteen and twenty-two. Mm -hmm. But that's in this now that uh, just about two days before this, you people had been beaten up by me men at Ballymore there. Mm -hmm. Same crowd I'd see on the job. Uh, uh, they uh, did they beat the whole three of you or four of you? And actually, the, as Jeff, the man said, if you hadn't that, you wouldn't say these things. But the, oh, you're on your way back to uh, Bo at that period. That and he time. couldn't contact poor Paddy Mullen for he's dead in America. Mm -hmm. No, I know. When did he die? He was home here last year. Was he? Oh, was he still there? I thought he was dead. And he went back. He only stayed well, a short it, time. Wasn't there a sad death in the family or something? Oh, yes. His son was drowned. Oh, yeah. That's the what same thing was called. The same thing was yeah, called. That's right. Zero. I knew there was a death. I thought it was he who died at that no. time. Well, uh... But then, did you get Mrs. Malloy? Was she in the car? Oh, well, she was in the car. And, 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 uh, Richard Dunn. Richard Dunn. Did the Malloy? Yeah, they, they had them stand out there. Dear old. You were praying for us. Mrs. Malloy and Richard, they're both dead and gone. But Mrs. Malloy was really. It, it took an awful lot out of it. Sure, it would. Really to see you. Yeah. I remember her telling me about it. She said she never would forget it that I was doing it. Oh, she, they were sure it would have been it. Got to be all shot. Because they were really gone mad. Yes, that was a few days after the body run shooting, you see. Some of them had uniform on and some of them hadn't done it, just caps. Uh -huh. You see, there's a very bad crossroads there where you'd be most likely to meet them sort of men, Ballymohan crossroads. It's now on the loop side of, of McKeown. Do you think it was the Ballymaldair crossroad? Oh, it's just at the corner of At the point of the road. The Bally Run Road comes from the loop road, mate. We turned for, for the loop. For the loop. Uh -huh. And we came the other road. You'd come the, the Bally Ronan Road. We'd road. come from, uh, I think we come out at the uh, Woods Church. Zero. Yes, I know, yes. Uh, uh, we didn't come through Bally Ronan. No, I know. Coming. But uh, I remember they went over off there and she had to go across the loop. And they didn't, they didn't stop us or ask us any questions that time. When you were going? We were going. The same, was the same posse on the city then? The same posse did there until you were coming back. And if, if we had a... Money more, oh, I know. Well, well you uh, see, didn't think of it. the chances are that they saw this car stopping and the girl getting out, and yeah. you wouldn't suspect a car that was now, stopping. Now, they couldn't have seen it at that place, of course, it's at the loop crossroad to the left, the girl light, not Ballymond Dare crossroads. Well, it wasn't that. No. Uh, but she, well, she was teaching in the loop. Yeah, she was teaching in the loop, that didn't mean to say she was living in it. Oh, I see. see I apologize. Yes. Yeah. Well, she was she was in Biggs there for in Bellamy. Right, right. I don't know exactly where, you know, but she was in Biggs. Ah, I don't know, but she had a go on the basically, you see. Just good? So wherever she was good. Are you the back tied in the back the of the car? Oh, I see. Oh, I see. The only part of the road. Oh, I know. Well, now, um, perhaps before you got back from Draperstown, they recognised who they, they found out who the one in the it. car was. That's it. And they're waiting for you and to come back. And they probably had found out too that Paddy Mullen was in that car. No, Paddy was Paddy identified Mullen with. And McQuinn didn't get their names together. Peter Rumpsters and Johnson and. I know. And oh, wasn't that an angel? Someone else. Well, but I had to give my name. Uh, well, no, of course, no, it's just. I had to give my name. But they asked, I don't know whether they, did they ask for Draper's license those days. I don't know if they did. They wouldn't need it very much if they took the number of your car that was well, playing out. No, I asked for the. They, they asked for the driver's license and all. Had a permit and all. I had no permit. Oh, I, I see, yeah. I didn't have permit that time. Uh, Just before that, they did. I know, uh, So they gave you a bad beat in the whole of you people. They did. Well, they had the rifles, you know. Uh, but they were gearing up for vengeance, they were. evidently. Well, they were just... And then vengeance was wreaked a couple of nights after. That's true. Yes. Oh, it was bad. Know. It was bad round Desert Martin. Well, it was later than 
A very bad day in Plano. Was it in 22 or 23? When three men were shot dead. Uh, yes. On the roadside. Oh, I was, I Without any provocation, whatever. That was 22. 22. Yeah. I remember it, you know. Yes. That's right. It was horrible. Near. A really uh, dreadful. It was. Was the broken house? It was. Near me. But sure, the sure it was equally harsh. Whenever Johnny McCracken was shot, oh, he was God, an, old, was an oldish man. An old man. And when two brothers called Hidden were shot. Yes. Somewhere at the rock. At the rock, that's right. A lot of those things, you know. Oh, it was dreadful. Mm. They say it was Cookstown people, too, that killed old Johnny McCracken. I don't I'm sure it was. No, I'm sure it was. But uh, that was the that was a Miss McEnany. Well, I don't know where she taught. She probably taught in the loop. She taught in the loop. I know now she taught in the loop. Nah, because, sure. Although I was only in the loop school once, and I don't know this. Like, Mrs. Uh, Park went to the loop then. She was Miss McNeer. Mm -hmm. She went to the loop after Miss McNeary left at about I 1923 know, uh, or 24. I know, uh, that's right. <coughs> well, now that, uh, that's good. But uh, I wanted especially to get corroboration of of why there was only three or four in the hall. And the, the barn. And the barn. The barn. The barn. The barn. The barn. Right. You see, everything that? was cleared up the night before. Everything was removed the night before. Right. Well, did the... the last meeting. Did the town like Moore and Airy be men return later, I know? Oh, they were there on the road nearly yeah, every night after They were on the road nearly every night after And did they come past that area too? They would mm -hmm. come in. They didn't... Uh, how do you ever came down by him on the road? That's the extraordinary thing. Uh, I think we're afraid. Well, it must have been afraid. They came to the head of the lane. Yes. The yes. lane corner. Uh. And they stopped every all co comers. Now, and um, his father, God rest him, and my father, were weren't interested in politics. They loved no, the cards. Uh. And they used to play in that little old hall where they. And there was no curfew at this particular time because the pair of old fellows were coming to open up the road at after midnight on a Sunday night or early Monday morning. Nobody with them, and they were both on the verge of well, between 50 and 60. They were both between 50 and 60. And the bee men at the head of the lane corner stopped the two of them, made them stand with their hands above their heads, and switched them. Two old men. I know. Well, Anne, wasn't there holding up a postman somewhere in our bow area? Near near a Protestant church or something, no? A postman held up. Yeah. I don't know, uh, somewhere near Dramani. Why, you're a bread man. A uh, bread man? English is bread cat. <coughs> I see. Where was it from Cookstown, I suppose? It was from Cookstown, you see. He was told to not come back. Uh -huh. He come back. Who was he? He was uh, returning. I see, yeah. He was a Catholic. Oh, I see. Yeah. No, I was. He was a Catholic. You see, he was an English character. I know, uh, I English boy right called through Belfast, the Belfast, boy called Belfast. Well, to tell the truth, it was, you know, it, it was a silly sort of thing, that, in a way. Oh, of course it was. A uh, Catholic was being employed, and his son is... Still on English as bread cards. Oh, that's true, yeah. Oh, nice, decent people in the Flarnans. Oh, well, somebody said there was a postman. I think he was, was he, was he Buick, you know? There wasn't a postman. Oh, Buick, now that'll be here. That'll be the Cove District. That'll be in the Ballandari. Uh -huh. Yes, that'll be Ballandari or <coughs> down through Murtown Way. Uh -huh. And to speak about Lower Coke, what does Lower Coke embrace? You know, Ballandari Bridge? Yes. You know that road that goes up? Uh, by Indico. Indico, that's right. Yes, I see, yes. That's uh, Indico. Uh, that's Indico. Uh, I see. And it's essentially Protestant. I know it is, uh. Well, I have an orange horn. Yeah. Indico. I know. Well, that was it. That was it. That was a stirring time. I'm talking about him. He was held up one night after that, and he was, had been out shooting in the evening when you were down through the marsh. Ah. Uh. Police are supposed to come on and then pat him on the road. Searched him. Uh -huh. Got cartridges in his pocket. Yes. So they were taking him to a coup. Yes. They arrested him because they were taking him to a coup. Walking, of course. Uh -huh. <coughs> they come to Ballandary Bridge. Coming up by the, the public house. Like this, now. Like this. Uh -huh. And uh, two boys, one on each side of him. 
Handum. Handum. Ah, no. Handum handcuffed, I think. He just raised his feet with him. One of the two of them, he was real tough wee boy. Very wee bullet. Ah. And <coughs> he threw the gate, the gate into the yard, you see. Ah. Threw it and down the back and into the river. He knew he had a river, I suppose, and too. And he dropped into the river on the, the bank, you see, the water had there. Ah. So he got in under the stump of a tree. Yes. He lay there. Ah. And his cap went down the river. Uh-huh. They fired at the cap. I thought that hit him, I suppose. I thought that hit him. He was supposed to be drowned. Well, and he didn't get drowned. He searched, the, searched the stayed there for nearly an hour. Uh-huh. He said he had to get a bit of a twig and put to his mouth to keep his teeth and... Exactly. Well, of course, you could have dead of exposure. There's a good term. <coughs> Shock and exposure. For well, However, took me to be bound to be frightened. You're a good swimmer, Lee. Fear's a dreadful thing. I know, but you're at that time of the year shitting duck. That'll be the winter time. Oh, right. It'll oh, be frozen. Yeah. It'll be frozen. But, but he stuck it till they went away anyhow and got up and got away. So he, he had to clear it. Why, well, of course. So he went to America. Went to America. Uh-huh. Well, was Mick Quinn ever went in some raids or something? Raiding for the No, no, I don't think he was, no. I was... No, I don't think so. Was there a blacksmith called Bigger? There was a Bigger. No, I... Who's Ben? Ben Bigger. Ben Bigger. I thought they were raiding for arms there. They were raiding for arms there. And he said, oh, sure, we'll get you there. And he went down and took the gun up and fired on him, just in the house. Like, they thought he... He's going to hand it over. He fired him and had it. You can out the way. Certainly would. Well, he was he was mad. Like he, he would have shot. Uh-huh. We he's a crippled crippled. Well, he was a hunchback. He was a hunchback. No, well, he was courageous, too. Oh, he was. Oh, was. yes, he knew no fear. Uh-huh. He knew fear. No I fear. seen him challenge him a boy in Cubson Street. Yes. A man was bit, twice the size of him. Yeah. He, he wasn't afraid of that. Three of them, three big men. <laughs> Very good. But he was a few drinks taken. It was a bit too hardy, you know, to go into houses asking for anything. They wouldn't have gone in, they would ask at the door, and if they handed them out, that was the end of the matter. Mm-hmm. You see, but uh, they were, sometimes they were so afraid that they didn't know how far the house was surrounded by, by what number, and this question the better part of all they gave them. But in these instances where, for example, Pessons and Fowls and all like that, they were very, they, they had a fortress already. In the place. Oh, they might have went to the houses because there's three or four of them. Sure, they. Big, strong, strong. I know. But well armed, it's more important that they be big and strong. And the hidden, you see, that's what happened with them. They wouldn't open the door either because they. Is that right? They, were, they had the pillocks and things, they were going to fight them. I know. So they think the same sure. thing happened in the McKeevers and Killy Burns. They, 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 they wouldn't they, let them in either. They wouldn't let them in. Yes. And they didn't let them in. No. You see, when you're inside behind a wall, you have nearly a better chance, and especially if you're firing out, you can select your target. The others are firing at windows and firing at walls. Very good. Well, so I'll let you get to your bed. <laughs> see, thanks very much.